Right now we're in the process of uh, our fall seeding of our winter wheat and we're getting close to halfway done at this point in time. Our lowest bar is about 1,300 feet. We farm up to 3,300 feet, so we have a lot of elevation change on the one end of the farm to the other. It's three, four, 500 to 12, 1,500 feet down into some of these canyons, depending where we're at and stuff. So always something to see. You look across the hillside and imagine all kinds of things. This area of the west was actually some of the first in Washington to get settled. And most of the area here started getting farmed in the late 1800s. It's historically been one of the top producing wheat regions in the United States. It started out with the horse and wagon, and they actually farmed steeper hills than what are farmed today. Some of them were much steeper, but they could get by with steeper hills with the horses and stuff. We've seen pictures where they've had buggy wrecks and some of that from the old days, but they gradually shifted to the modern mechanization and, and the evolution to where we are today. My dad started Warren Farms in 1969. My brother and I bought land in 1987 and we bought it as a joint venture. So we're pretty well entrenched around here. Hey, I just paid off my seed bill. How is South Dakota? Was it snowy? I serve in the community because I enjoy giving something back. When you invest this much in, in capital, in the land and work this many generations to get to the point you're at. Generally, you stay in that spot. Good, I'm gonna, uh, my latte, just for me. Thank you, Judy, still got credit with you? Okay, thank you. What makes life different here is the variability we experience. We were having good drying this morning. You were seeing all the kind of the humidity burning off, mist lifting off the ground, the ground fog and doing good. And now she's blown in from down below and spraying Roundup in the fog. That's kind of put on hold till this blows out of here. It's not boring when you're out there trying to farm this. We have weather that changes every day. We have terrain that is extremely rugged, which is challenging, and that's what keeps us awake. You never know what the day is going to bring. I say it seems like basically our main rule is you're never on plan A because it doesn't really exist. So I was wondering about burning today. We're ready to burn. What well, do you think? Did you guys get enough rain last night that you probably we started burning probably in the late 80s. So we've been burning for 25 years. We raise a lot of over 100 bushel wheat and much like corn, you get a lot of residue and you know, you just can't get through it with your drill. So that's why we have to use burning to remove some of the residue. It's a little controversial in some parts of the country, but it does make sense, at least in this area. It may not in all areas, but around here it does work. Nobody got anything burnt, did they? Randy got uh, 10 acres burnt the other day. We cannot burn our land when we want to. We have to get a burning permit from our local burning authority who regulates the burn days. I got you down until as soon as we get a burn day. And I, I figured nobody will be able to burn today with as much rain we got last night. Not so. without some major sunshine. Yeah, and some wind, and it's not looking good for wind. So. Okay. okay, yeah. Very good. Got you on the list. It looks like we're probably going to have to hope and pray and, and uh, wait till tomorrow for a green light for burning. <laughs>